This is my mom and dad, Mary and Jeff. This is my sister, Tessa. In 2013, my family moved into a brand new home that we had constructed on previously undeveloped land in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. We had no idea that in doing so, we would be putting ourselves into the center of a dangerous haunting that would go on to haunt each member of our family for years to come and even through the present day. What you will see and hear in this documentary is real. Be prepared. Now that we've sold our house, I can finally tell our story. You two introduce yourselves. I'm Jeff Brown. And I'm Mary Erickson Brown. How long have you guys been married? 26 years? 27. 27 years. <laughs> 27. And you guys think this house is haunted? Yeah. Yes. For sure. Yeah, definitely. Um, we had the land with my clinic building down the hill. And we had two homes up here that we had moved. We donated them to a charity, and we created three lots. And then the middle lot here was not really existent. And so we own land, like, behind this lot, if you will. And the guy that owned this lot owned the strip of that prevented us from accessing that lot. So that's why we bought the two homes. Rezoned it all, and then we built our home on this middle lot. And then basically that happened in 2012, 13, we moved in. And um, so the lot to the west of us is still empty, and the lot next to us now, they've just built the home on it this year. <clears throat> so. But basically you built the whole house. Yeah, brand new house. Nothing weird or sketchy about building or anything. No. Just seemed like a normal house. Mm -hmm. Yep. So, what was, what was moving in like? It was great moving in. We just, this was our first house that we built and it was kind of our dream house. So, we were totally excited. Everything went really well. The move went really well. We were just moving boxes kind of towards the end of the move. And that's when something started to happen. So, what was the first memory you have of something paranormal happening here? I remember when we were moving, going back and forth between our old house and this house, and we left Tessa here, and Jeff and I went back for another load, and when we came back, she was hiding in her closet, crying and saying that she heard voices and somebody doing dishes, and she was wondering if I was here, and we said, no, we had gone to the old house and she tried to take her screen off and get out of her room and at the time we just thought okay maybe she's going through something with the move not sure really what to think about everything she was saying but it only got worse from there yes uh introduce yourself hi my name is tessa i'm colin's sister how old are you? <laughs> we started. Hi, wait for <laughs> Hi, my name is Tessa. I'm Colin's sister. I'm 18, and I'm about to be a freshman in college. What is like your first impression of the house when we first moved in? Doesn't have to be ghostly. I was really excited to see how the new house would turn out, and I was really excited for the future. What was the first experience that you had here? The first experience I had was when we first moved in and my parents had gone back to our old house to get new bo more boxes and more of our things. So I decided to stay back in the new house and wait for them. So I was waiting in my bedroom unpacking my new stuff when I started hearing dishes clinking in the kitchen and 
all different kinds of noises and even water running. And so basically I got super freaked out and I locked my bedroom door and started freaking out, tried to call my parents, but basically I just kept hearing dishes clinking around like someone was doing dishes in the kitchen. So I locked my door and started crying and tried to get out of my bedroom, all the, my bedroom window and took the screens off, but there was no one there outside my room and I thought someone was in the house. What happened next? What do you guys remember? So what I remember is, is really Colin and Tessa coming to us and saying that they were hearing, I think it was really mainly male voices mm -hmm. coming from down their bedroom hallway. And, um, and also I think at that time there was some things with Colin like seeing uh, shadows or maybe crawling on the floor mm -hmm. uh, at that time. So they, they constantly be coming into our bedroom at night, being afraid, sleeping in our bed with us. We didn't really quite believe it at mm -hmm. first, kind of like, you know, it seemed kind of odd. What started to happen? Well, me and Colin both have had lots of experiences down at the end of our hallway, but our rooms have always been the hot spot of the house, we feel like, but I've had different things happen in my room and, and Colin's room, but I mean, I've just felt like there was someone there watching me sometimes, but I'd say, first of all, I've heard men's voices in my closet multiple times. Um, I guess another time I also had been sleeping in my bed one night when all of a sudden I heard my computer start up again and there was a movie that I was watching and it had popped up again on my computer when it was completely dead. So. I just heard that come on at night one night and I was really freaked out, but my computer was completely dead. So I guess there's just little things that have happened in my room that have really freaked me out. But also when you go over to Colin's bedroom, there's also been a lot of things that have happened. And I've heard crawling and clawing on the floors at nighttime in his room. And I've heard lots of different men's voices also over there, but I'd say the clawing is really creepy in Colin's room. So that's another crazy thing that's happened to both me and Colin, so it's quite a bit. I think, you know, I don't, it wasn't too long after that we kind of started to hear our own stuff. Mm -hmm. I think what really hit me actually was one night, like at three in the morning or so, uh, the TV just came on, just blaring. It was like a fuzzy white screen. Um, and then, I, and then I think the, the smoke detector kept going off like every night, like it would go off for like three or four nights. And then we just started to hear things <clears throat> and thought that was, and the dishes also, mm -hmm. we heard that. I think that was kind of the end really actually when we started to hear the dishes ourselves was when we called Don. Mm -hmm. But it started with, with Colin and Tessa, you know, hearing those male voices at the end of the hall and, or in their bedroom, I know Colin, definitely seen, like, that was creepy. I felt like a shadow crawling around his bed on the floor. That was a weird thing. And, but I think in the beginning, again, we kind of thought they were just kind of like, this can't really be true. Or, well, we thought it was a brand new house. Yeah. So we're like, that, you guys, we yeah. can't be haunted if it's brand new. Right, yeah. And then they both started saying the same thing when they worked together. So then it started to get a little bit strange. What was, for both of you, the moment where you realized the house was haunted? For me, I remember Colin saying he was home alone one afternoon, and he called us and was totally freaked out and said he heard a baby crying in the house, and he had been talking on the phone to one of his friends, and this friend had heard this noise too, and we kind of just brushed it off because like there's no baby in the house and then probably the next day Jeff was out in the garage and he came in and he said I actually heard a baby in the garage and so then you and I were oh my gosh maybe Colin did hear something and I was helping Tessa a couple days later sitting by the island just total silence working on Spanish with her and we 
totally heard a baby cry coming from down in the lower level. And so we each heard it on separate occasions and in different areas of the house. And after that, we never heard it again. But that totally... Listen. There goes the dogs barking. Weird timing. From downstairs. Yeah, hmm. right. Well, I mean, the baby was a, a big one. Yeah, so the way I remember it is more that you and Tessa heard it. I came home, and you're like, oh my gosh, you won't believe what's happened. And then you heard the baby cry. So I hadn't actually heard the baby until like maybe a day or two later, and I was going out of the garage, and it, I mean, it, clearly a baby crying, you know, like I'd say, two seconds, three seconds at the most. And that was like a big one. Yeah, I would say that probably for me, the TV coming on and then the smoke detector going off night after night in a row. And finally, the clinking of the dishes for me when I thought actually somebody was out there in the dishes and I actually got up out of the bed and I came back and I laid in bed with you and we're like, oh my, is that possible? Like. <laughs> You know, it's really a noise, like, and it was. So that I think that was kind of the defining moment for me, is that kind of led up to that. You know, when I went from, <clears throat> you know, the TV was weird. I remember getting in bed saying, "Well, that was really weird," and you know, probably just something, you know, electrical. And then the smoke detector, like I said, going off two, three nights in a row, and every and I got more freaked out. And then the dishes was kind of the end, where I was like, "Okay, something." Well, you may think you understand where this story begins. To tell the full truth here, we have to leave Sioux Falls, travel up to North Dakota, and step two years into the past. This is the original, one of the only original buildings on the farm. This one right here? Yeah. This shoe. That is a good question. I have no idea. Do we know anybody? Like, <laughs> whose wood is this? I don't know. I don't have any idea, but you know, it's over a hundred years old, probably. That's crazy. Uh huh. The, that, the, and then uh, oh, the little guy. This is the this is the crazier one to me because a kid's kid's shoe is pretty distinct. That was the husband and the wife's shoes. Probably. And they're still there. Yes. They're right there. Probably. Uh huh. There's so many artifacts around here. Horseshoes. We are in your enchanted garden, right? Yes. So this, before we even did this, this was all forest. Yes. From basically here, all through here. And over the years, you can just carve the wood off. Great. What are your favorite features? Nona's enchanted forest that she has set up is filled with all sorts of history. For example, what she has turned into the Harry Potter house was once the outhouse for the farm. So much history like everywhere around here. Every place you look there's something. Speaking of that, it's a good thing to be cheap. Okay. So that's my favorite, obviously, part of the enchanted forest. My apologies for the terrible audio here. Even with a shotgun microphone, the wind was so horrible that day and I didn't realize how badly it sounded. What Nona is saying here is that this wagon is the original wagon that the first members of our family rode to this farm on in order to settle the land. It's a crazy old piece of history just sitting in a patch of grass. So this is your pride. Yes. This yes. is your pride. Yes. <laughs> the old chicken coop. Is this original? I, you know, it was used, I think, for different purposes, but maybe for the chickens. Mm -hmm. And then they probably used it for sheep, like Mary and Milo did when they were 4-H. They had sheep, and they kept a couple of them in here. And then we changed it over to a chicken coop, and they raised chickens in here. Then it became Halloween house. Well, let's take a look. Yes. Why don't you... <laughs> Let it take us into the house of horrors. And thanks to Mary, she was very instrumental in getting it started. And then we added all of these guys, and we've had more fun out here. 
every thing or every Halloween we've been out here and told stories in our costumes. Bring the kids out here for the party. Yeah. Tell what you were just yeah. literally just that's saying. Good. That's good. You know, when we were growing up, it was always my dad's brother said that, and there was a barn on the farm, and at night, and their father had passed away several years, but there was a lantern that would go from window to window after dark, and they would think that that was their father, but a lot of times they saw a lantern in the barn, and the, then they said they saw the devil behind the barn, which I don't believe that one, <laughs> but I do believe that ghost story, because we always heard that one a lot growing up. Anything mm -hmm. else? Any other ones you can think of? Um, I just know that Art, he was a big trickster, like uh -huh. you said, he with was. the sheet, playing a lot of, like he would tie like a rocking chair and tie a string to it and rock it and then say there was a ghost. <laughs> then, well, this was an old story too, when Norman, my dad's dad, died, he had a heart attack. Yes. And then he, his sister in California, or would she, where would she have been? Or was she in Norway? But she saw him, she saw a clear picture of him clutching his heart and then she found out too that he had died. So there's something in the family, our family, where you can, I don't know if you're seeing visions or if this person's appearing to you, but there's those stories that those mm -hmm. people swear and yes. you've been in Fargo. And then you said that you did have that one, like you were in bed and then he would always come into bed. Uh -huh. And then you kind of felt like something on the bed, sit down, like it was almost getting into sure. bed. Yeah, yeah. After the chicken coop, I watched as Mary and Nona walked back to the farmhouse, and I couldn't help but reminisce on all of the amazing memories that I've had at the farm over the years. The place really does carry a peaceful energy. Do you wanna just tell me about the energy of the farm, and just how it feels to just be here? I just always think the energy is really high energy, with all of the farming going on, and comings and goings and still so busy and so I just think that it's high energy just a lot of energy and I think it's I just feel always like that I don't know that I feel like people are still around like I feel Norman here when I come and I just always think about his brothers living here and just how we have such a connection to this land so there is a lot of energy I also have always thought that the farm just has a really good energy around the area. Just being here um, feels really nice and very calm. Like right now in the morning, it's just beautiful out. It's bright and sunny and it's just nice. And I actually had an experience here. Um, it would have been two summers ago where I was sleeping in the bedroom. This used to be your old bedroom, Mary's, my mom's. and. I heard footsteps come up the stairs, and the stairs make a distinctive creak, you know? Mm -hmm. You step on like yeah. the third or fourth. And I heard those <coughs> creaks, and then these footsteps came all the way up the stairs and then stopped right at the edge of the bedroom. And I thought Tessa, my sister, was gonna come in, say something, or Mary, or you know, whoever was in the house. And no one ever came in. And I actually have a phone clip on my phone because I started recording after that. It's like 16 minutes of just the darkness and silence because I thought something was going to happen, but nothing ever happened. And I was pretty freaked out. So I don't know what that was, but it was very interesting to say the least. So here's the stairway, by the way, for my story. Here's the stairway. Watch this. I'll show you the creaky step. Right there. No matter how you hit it, it squeaks. And so does this one.
Later that night, we stopped by to see my cousins in Mayville, North Dakota, and I thought of asking them if they thought the farm was haunted. My cousin Simon's response was actually pretty shocking to me. Here's what he had to say. Okay, Simon, so why don't you tell me what you feel about Nona's house since you're out there a lot? Well, it's very creepy. It's more of a... Well, it's an old house and lots of dead things there. She has a bone pile. Downstairs basement's very creepy. It's just, you know, your average 93-year-old great grammar's house. What do you think about the, what were you telling me about the light too? Oh, like if you turn on the light in the basement and there's supposed to be one by the shower, it, like when you're taking a shower, sometimes it just flickers. So it's, it's really creepy. It's, and you work out there alone a lot. Yeah, like weeks at a time usually. So, it's just really creepy. Yeah. What? Oh my god, what the hell? It's back on, Mom. So we had just left the Clifford School earlier that night, and we were driving back towards Nona's farm when we noticed a light on the side of the road turn off. The church that Nona goes to a lot, um, it's right down the street from her farm, out in the middle of nowhere. She would just come and practice on her own, and there was nobody in the church, and she would sometimes hear noises and get totally creeped out and have to leave. So, by the way, I've never been Anyone who sees that in the background is huge lightning right there in the distance. It's incredible. So yeah, you've never been here at night? Not this late. Um, there's a cemetery literally right here, right behind the church where my grandpa's actually buried. And we're doing this in an effort to investigate our theory that hauntings are not confined to places where people died. They can be places where people spent a lot of time where energy has been imprinted um, and if you are religious this is a place where you come to connect with your spirituality and people would come every Sunday of their lives if they lived out here and then eventually what What the hell why is it doing that well they do this every week they repeat this action they come to this one other place they leave their farm uh, only a couple of times a week and they'd come here to this church and then eventually they would die and be buried Literally right here behind the church. So if there's a place where their energy has been stored and or imprinted I should say I would feel like it would be this church. It's a very creepy church. So without further ado Let's go see if this place has anything spooky associated with So like I said before, this is just a normal church. We're here because people spent every Sunday here basically for their entire lives. And I feel like that creates an energy imprint. And we're gonna see if a regular church with no deaths has anything to say so many years later. We wanted to do an investigation here. Like in a church, I should say, but I've never been given the chance. That's supposed to be like the everlasting light that goes all the time. Yeah, it was on today. Mm -hmm. Is anybody here that was went to school or went to, attended the church? This is Mary. Church. I went to church here growing up. Sunday school, confirmation, my entire family went to church here and some of them still do. I love this church, we're not being disrespectful. <laughs> so many just movements, mm -hmm. hard to tell what they all are. Mm -hmm. I personally feel like there's a very heavy energy in here. 
I feel just very I think there are a lot of people that spent their lives around here and in this area. Someone's been in here today. I said someone's been in here today. We're in here today, the piano is open. Because I was touching the keys. And the piano is shut. Yeah, look at it. Someone came in and just randomly shut this. They didn't touch these other ones. Weirdly enough, I didn't touch these either. It's just this one that I was trying to play. This is your last chance to say anything. We are about to leave. Any members of the congregation, pastors, And the light's still on. Didn't shut off again. So here are all these tombstones and gravestones. And all these people that are buried here went to church every Sunday right up there in that church. I feel like that's definitely left an energy imprint. So I'm not gonna lie, that small amount of time that we just spent in the church was one of the most intense energies that I've ever felt in any of these investigations. It was just intense. It was not scary. It was just there. It was like you can feel, feel like going to church and being in this place for such a long time. Every Sunday you go to this church, you imprint the same energy, you think the same thoughts, you pray, and you try to connect with this spirit. That really stains the environment. And that's the, it's the original church. It's the church that these people have been going to this whole time. I don't know. It's just weird seeing all these people that died and they're buried right here in this peaceful area and they went to church right there and they died and were buried right here. So their whole life is centralized in this area. If they left any energy in this world and it stained on some environment, it would be right here in this circle of land, square, whatever you want to call it, the area that they inhabited. So yeah creepy. I'm out here alone in the cemetery walking around. I'm gonna go check out the energy at the farm. See if I can tap into that and I guess call it a night on this one. Strangely enough, years and years before I began my career as a paranormal investigator, I filmed a spoof of ghost adventures at my grandmother's farm entitled Ghost on the Farm. It's pretty bizarre to see myself so young acting exactly how I would go on to act later in my professional life. Here are a few clips from this video, enjoy this, I think it's pretty funny. Hi, now I'm going to investigate this room here. This is one of the rooms where the specter has been reported to have been sighted. All the... Y you just caught that, right? That that wasn't me. Already first minute and we still got some good evidence. I've set up an automatic heat camera to take pictures of me about every 20 seconds. Ghost, I know you're here. Please, give me a sign if you can... You, you just caught that, right? I mean... Can you knock again if that was you? We have a ghost here, people. We have a ghost. <gasps> Whoa! What was that? Whoa! Hi, I am getting free. 
You just heard that, right? I'm the only one in this house. No, you're not. <laughs> Amazingly, only seconds after we heard these voices, we captured the image of a specter in the window above my head. Thanks. Mary and I found ourselves back at my grandmother's farm attempting to find some answers as to why my family seems to attract so many spirits. It was time to investigate the farm. do that all night at the in the high school that we were at. Let's see if it's something to do it before. Nope. No wires down here. How about up here? Could it be something up here? Nope. Oh, that was weird. That was weird. Grandpa Norman. Anybody else that could be here at the farm? Um, can you please make your presence known if you're here with us? This basement is also filled with a lot of creepy stuff that might influence your mentality if you come down here, but Right now, I'm just not really feeling any sort of energy in the house. Point one, though, right when I said that. Oh, that's weird. Right when I said that there was nothing. Point one. Point two. Zero. Hmm. Hmm. Interesting. Someone might be with us. Mm -hmm. Point one, again, 
zero, right when I said that. Is there anybody back here? Point one, right again. Maybe they're back here. Mm -hmm. Watch where you are. Is this one of the Ericsons? Dad, are you here? Point one, right when you said dad. <gasps> Norman? Are you with Colin and I? Norman, are you here? Do you have something to say to us or Nona? All of a sudden, the audio in this clip just drops out. This never happens to us when we film. Strangely enough, right as the audio drops, we seem to capture an orb on camera fly by on the bottom right side of the screen. Was this paranormal? You watch and decide. Norman, are you here? Do you have something to say to us or Nona? Well, that was weird. That was weird. I always felt like it was Norman that... Oh, right when I said Norman again. It keeps coming back. Uh, we're standing by his oh. dark room. This is his dark room right here? Mm hmm Where he used to do Norman. develop his pictures. Look at... Norman, is this your dark room right here? It's crazy. So this is his dark room. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you, it's like it's not like intelligent energy. It's like mm -hmm. some sort of like dormant energy. Like residual. Residual, yes. Look at that. And then Grandma oh, stars seems there. Oh, spider webs. Really? Norman, are you in here with all of your old equipment? I'd love to meet you. It's six six six. Oh, weird. No matter what, I love you, Norman. Thanks for coming through if that was you. Oh, weird. Mm -hmm. Point three, right when I gave it to you? Mm -hmm. Point four, point three, zero, right when I handed it to Mary. Norman was your dad. Mm -hmm. That we think we might have contacted. Yeah. It was kind of cold right here, actually, just now. Very cold right here. Yeah, it's weird. That's it's like right long. here. Oh. Point one. Oh, no, it went back to zero. It feels like it felt really cold for a mm -hmm. second. Kind of just got better. Let me just get a couple of these things on the camera. I really just wanted to get this thing right here. Oh, that is creepy. Look at the right below it. Ooh. It's such a low handle. Were people that much shorter? I guess. All of the items downstairs tell a story of their own. These are pieces of history that have accrued over generations and tell the story of my mother's side of the family. These items reach from the humble beginnings of the pioneers who settled this very land all the way through the present day. And I 100% believe that the fact that they are piled up in the basement of my grandmother's farmhouse is contributing to the intense energy and haunting that the property holds. So, Mary and I have been down here for a while now. I'm trying to read the energy. Felt mm -hmm. some weird stuff come through kind of in the back area, back where Norman, my grandfather, who passed away um, a while ago, back where his dark room is. Maybe he came through. Yeah. He's the one that I've always felt comes through in the house because he lived here his whole life. Mm -hmm. He's buried literally right down the road. So, if there's somewhere to come back to, mm -hmm. it's right here. Now, Mary's gonna go to bed. I'm going to head out alone to just check out the rest of the farm grounds and see if I can feel any other energy or hear anything and kind of put a close on investigating the farmhouse. But I'm going to go do that now and we'll see. What is this thing? Looks like uh, the stairway from the conjuring in the darkness. Well, as you can see, the farm is right there. That's the actual farmhouse. It's behind me. And I'm now alone walking out on the ground. Here's the building that's always kind of creeped me out. It's the garage. There's, there's the farmhouse right there through the tree. 
And there's the moon above it. So over here's the old slide. All the kids used to play. Here's the old destroyed teeter-totter. It's crazy to think about how fast time flies. Even me being a kid and coming out here. It's crazy. It is so calm out here. It's incredible. There's something big moving around back there. Hello? I shouldn't have this light on because there's so many damn bugs. Oh, I just saw a light in the trees. What the hell was that? So many bugs. Hello? That's odd. There's no more animal noises after that. It came from right here. Turn on. I would have seen and heard it run away if it was really right here. This is exactly where it came from. Hello? Hmm. Well, that was just odd. Yeah, so I'm basically out just in the enchanted forest area. Well, that was weird. It sounded like an animal moving around back there. Called out to it right away and tried to get it to respond or at least run away. And no noise. And I went back and looked the exact area where I heard it. I've been here a million times. I know exactly where noise comes from and there's nothing there not saying that's paranormal just saying that's just kind of weird at this point i've been out here around 45 minutes by myself and apart from hearing those weird noises in the woods right when i called out and everything it's silent, but I shouldn't say that it's silent because there's an energy to this whole property, which is why I wanted to make this video. I was hoping that it would manifest in some way, but it just didn't. And you know, folks, I can't, I can't bring you this feeling. I can't take what I'm feeling here and put it on the, on the screen. It just, it doesn't happen. And that's what I hate about making paranormal videos is that half to three fourths of the experience is in person it's not able to be captured you can't capture it on camera it's how you feel and what happens and the things that go through your mind all these buildings have been here for such a long time they've seen multiple families raised and sent off into the world and each person that's been here has left their mark there are just so many objects around that have had so much meaning to people you know a wagon out back that pioneers used to get here, a tree stump from my grandmother's honeymoon, old cars in the shop, my grandpa's old motorcycle in, in the garage, so much stuff. And all of those items have energy attached to them. But yeah, I'm gonna call it a night and head to bed. I love you guys. When the sun comes out on the farm, you can't help but feel at peace. It's like nature is talking to you. The birds sound happier, the insects don't really bother you, and the sunlight feels warmer. There is a really great energy there at my grandmother's farm, and it is an energy that has fed generations of my family and a feeling that one can just sit and bask in. To end our exploration of this history and haunting, we headed out with Nona to some old spots in the immediate area that hold deep personal meaning to her, including the gravesite of my grandfather Norman. I did. Somebody from Blue Falls in Texas had to come to North Dakota and clean off that stone. That's really bad. I know. <laughs> it was the whole thing was covered in dirt yesterday when I came.
Something has been doing that. Because look at all the dirt piles. Some animal. Oh, Norman. You're a grandpa. That would have been 2018 years ago. That's crazy. Time flies. Yeah. So how long did you guys go to the church for? I've been in this church for 72 years. Since our... Yeah, uh, since you were married. So yeah. 72? 72. That's crazy. And have... It doesn't seem possible. No. <laughs> Families that become, are they like dwindling down a lot? Yes, very much so. There's only four or five families left. How many people would come in like the 40s and 50s? Probably 50 to 75. Every Sunday? Oh my God, that's crazy. Yeah, that's all. The church would have been full. How many people is that? Like 12, 15? 12, 15 on a Sunday. Wow. What do you think is going to happen to the church? Well, eventually, I'm sure it will close. And right now, they're thinking about you know adjusting the schedule so they could probably have one service for all the three churches that work together. But I don't know. I think that's down the road. Eventually, I'm sure it will close because there are fewer families now living on the farm than it was then. Right here, so here's the church, here's Norman's grave, and then the farm is in what direction? Can you right point down it? Down the road here, a, a mile, yes, a mile away. <laughs> it's actually that. That's the farm right there. The one with the big pointed, what kind of tree is that? Uh, the really tall one. I because I always see that one, that's how I know that it's, it's the farm. You can tell that my grandma misses my grandfather, Norman. She never remarried, and after his death, she continued life as usual and has been one of the biggest influences in my life in the way that she has shown my entire family how strong of a woman that she is. This is a woman that fell down a flight of stairs, broke her hip, and crawled back up the flight of stairs to get help while she had a shattered hip. It's unbelievable. However, we still weren't done with my family's story, and we had a few spots to stop by before we headed back to South Dakota. I'll say it one more time for you. This is one of the pioneer farms that were started out here. They belong to that church, and now there's... This was one of the first farms, and now it's completely abandoned. Everyone's gone. It was an early farm, too, but they've kind of kept it up better. And there are no people living on this farm. He was one of the pioneers. It used to be like people living, you know, just think about there, there, there. Yeah, yeah, like people every grow up. Every, like, you know, so many families everywhere. Now there's hardly anybody. And the big farmers have kind of just taken over instead of so many small farmers. Yes. Not really the family farmers anymore. Hardly. <laughs> Crazy. This was, a, you know, one of the pioneer, but they got a kind of a new house, newer house a few years back, you know, but that was a pioneer family. And this one up here that you're going to do is original. It kind of looks like his pickups here. I don't know, that might be just an old pickup. I think it's an old pickup because that's always been there. We always say the oh, same yeah. thing. I don't think he's here. I feel like if time passed, seriously, that thing right there. This was a farm that was uh, used for a Sunday school picnic. Every June we would have a, a picnic here and a program. And the uh, fellow that lived here was very accommodating and nice to the church people. And so we would come and have a service in the morning and the children would sing, and then we'd have a noon meal, and then in the afternoon we'd have all kinds of activities, games that they would play, and everybody had a good time. And then we'd go home, and we'd come back in the evening and have a Lutheran League program, mm -hmm. and probably do some more games. And it was the highlight of the church to come here every year for our annual picnic. God, it was the highlight. Everybody is like, you, the picnic is here. And this house 
was perfect. And he still lived here. Mm -hmm. And so we'd go and look in the windows and be like, oh my gosh, he still lives in here. None of this stuff was here. And that little house right there, isn't that where they would do the cooking? Yeah. All the women would come, uh, and men hopefully, and prepare the food, we'd eat there, and then they had the, like the program in that big building. Uh -huh. In between like those trees back there, they had like, it was a wooden, like concession stand and like they had the you know cold bottles of pop in the ice water candy bars and you would get to go up there and buy treats and it was like the highlight when you got old enough to work in the concession stand but it was like you spent the entire day here and it was so fun and back then this whole property was not destroyed like it oh, is now. It was no. pristine. It was perfect. Yeah, there was nothing. He took real pride in keeping his farm up. It didn't look like this. Yeah, that was perfect. Let's have some really fond memories here. Oh, yes. Everybody so, look forward to the yeah. annual picnic and yeah. coming here to have a good time. Yeah. And now it's just kind of sitting here, yeah. decaying, really, sadly. Is it his, like, would it be his... Not his grandson, but a relative owns it now. <laughs> a younger one. But if you could just go back and see, like all the kids running around, the people, adults sitting around, the like concession stand back there, and then they'd have some lights back there. I'd love to see that. that was I would love to see that. Wow. I know if you could find any pictures, that'd be super cool. Yeah. We'll have to try that. Anything else you guys want to say? Oh, that's, that's it. Huh. <laughs> <laughs> it's just storage now. Wow. Should we go upstairs? Because that's beautiful. are inside the old farmhouse where the guy who owned this property used to live and it just really shows how it's crazy that my mom and my grandma had such intense happy memories here when the house was pristine and like look at it now it's literally shambles see so definitely gotta be careful over here that door is sealed shut Is it a weird feeling having all these people that you kind of like knew leave? It is kind of unreal, you know, to think yeah. that they're gone. They're yeah. Gone. No more. So, yeah. I'll get both this beautiful church. <laughs> it's the oldest living person from the church. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Well, you got that going yeah, for you. That's, yeah? that's a good thing, though. Yeah. A um, sheriff, Dave, would come and kind of monitor and see what was going on. And you know, there was always a little bit of drinking going on. So he would monitor and see where everybody was and what they were doing. And then eventually, he would probably round up a few of the people that were a little bit inebriated. Sometimes he would handcuff them to that tree. <laughs> they would have to sit there and wait. For whoever drove them there, ready to take them home again. Dance was over, and they would round up 
these guys that were tied up to the tree. The family would bring them home. And that was the tree that they tied them to? I think so. Yeah. It was a big sturdy tree. Yeah. But it was smaller at that time. Yeah. So you could get people yeah. actually handcuffed. <laughs> Unbelievable. Yeah, that's so cool. That's, that's a really firm reminder of the stuff that disappears. It's yeah. like this is literally now only a tree and dirt. Yeah. People used to come and dance and drink and celebrate, and now yeah. it's literally just a dirt pile and a tree. Maybe these flowers are growing because of all the good energy that was here one time. Could be. Well, I think we're good. Okay. There we go. I think that I shall never see a poem as lovely as a tree. A tree whose hungry mouth is pressed against the earth's sweet flowing breast. A tree that looks at God all day and lifts her leafy arms to pray. I think I shall never see a poem. Hot stop it. <laughs> poem as lovely as a tree. Does that make sense? Yes! That's very good. That was beautiful! That was beautiful! I was mesmerized. I know. How, when did you memorize that? Well, we had it in language class when I was in like oh seventh and eighth grade. God. So it was in this old poem book that we had in school. Joyce Kilmer wrote it, and it's been set to music, you know. And yeah. I have the piece. Yeah, we had to learn, you know, so much poetry when we were in seventh and eighth grade. So that was one of my favorites. <laughs> and you've always loved trees. Yes, I have. <laughs> After we had visited the tree, we had to say goodbye to my grandmother and we headed back to South Dakota. After hearing all these stories about the haunting of my ancestors, I couldn't help but think about the fact that maybe it's the blood that flows in my veins that holds something spiritual that helps connect my family with the afterlife. I guess it's something that I'll never fully understand. To really reach the bottom of why my family is so haunted, we had to return to Sioux Falls to the house where I grew up in order to gather my own family's stories so that we could paint a full picture of the haunting that has plagued all of us from the moment we moved into this home. Let me tell you, this haunting never stopped, and I don't know if it ever will. Okay, so my name is Colin Brown, obviously, and this is my story about my haunted house that I lived in throughout pretty much all of high school. We built the house ourselves, and I 100% believe it to be haunted by something. I just don't know what it is. So the story of our house really begins in 20... It would have been 2012, 2013 when my parents started building the house. This whole area used to just be a lot. There were houses that we had to move off of this land. They were donated to charity. And I actually filmed in the basement of one of those houses. It was completely derelict. It hadn't been lived in for about a decade. I filmed a horror movie about a satanic cult. And funny enough, this was when no one was living in the house and the police knew this. Um, we were shooting a scene with a cult in the basement of the house and we spray painted the walls with fake blood and made a huge pentagram on the wall. And the police actually thought that the people that were acting in the movie were a real cult. And they entered the house and took all my satanic paraphernalia and I came in the next day and I was like, damn, did I just forget that I brought that home or what happened to all my stuff? And we're like, oh, it's probably at the house. And it wasn't. And there's was a cop outside of the house. And my mom and dad asked, you know, like, why are you guys here? What are you doing? And they're like, brace yourselves. We're about to tell you something crazy. 
we believe that there's a satanic cult practicing black magic in that house right there. And they started laughing and we're like, dude, that's our son, Colin. He's just making a horror film. And then they started laughing and we had to go down to the actual county jail and or wherever they were keeping it, the corrections area. And we had to get the boxes of stuff that they took. And it was like a dagger, a demon baby, all this stuff. So there's already like this whole satanic element in this abandoned house next door that got moved. But when we moved into the house, it was completely empty. It was, you know, brand new. All the materials were new. There was some repurposed stuff, but overall it was just, you know, there was no history to the house. It was basically a skeleton that had no family and no history yet. So when we moved in, didn't expect anything too crazy to happen. We all, you know, believed in spirits and whatnot, but we didn't expect the spirits to come, you know, home with us. So my sister, as you probably heard at this point in the documentary, she had her first major experience on the very first day that we were moving in. As the first time she was in the house and she heard the men's voices and the dishes moving in the kitchen. And I was with my parents and we came back and she was freaking out and we all just thought, man, was she, you know, just having some sort of a mental issue or was there something else going on here? We didn't really think that it was spirits, it's a brand new house. But as time went on, I started to realize that I didn't feel fully comfortable in the house, which was strange because it was a brand new home, as I've said already. And it should have felt, you know, like home, like a new adventure, but night after night I was having these nightmares in my room where I was sleeping at the end of the hall. So you also got to realize the structure of the house. So at the end of this hallway over here, kind of what I'm looking at uh, from where I'm being interviewed is the hallway. And that's kind of the area where all the paranormal activity seems to stem from in the house. And it's a hallway that branches off in a T-shape to my sister's room and my room. And it's in this area, it seems to be a vortex of this activity that kept happening. So when I was down there at the beginning, I just thought it was, you know, my room and whatnot, but as I started to put my decorations up and, you know, spend every night there, I started to realize that something felt off about the room. Um, just being in there, it felt much darker than other rooms in the house straight off the bat. And a couple weeks in, I had my first real crazy experience. Tessa had been telling me from across the hall that she was hearing voices and footsteps in the hallway at night. And I had heard, you know, little noises, like maybe a knock or two, but I just assumed that was part of a new house, you know, growing into what it would become. But this one night, I specifically remember, and I've told the story before in interviews, but it just still blows my mind. I was in my bedroom asleep, and I woke up in the middle of the night, and I heard someone out in the kitchen, which is weird, because that's where Tessa heard these noises before, and I just yelled out. I said, Mom, is that you out there? And I heard someone actually respond to me, a female voice, and said, yeah? Like something like, I can't remember exactly what it said, but it was, it was like a sentence or a couple words. And so I was like, can I have a glass of water? And it once again said, yeah? Some shit like that. I can't remember exactly what it said, but it was saying yes. And I heard footsteps immediately from the kitchen walk over to my bedroom and I'm thinking, damn, like, I didn't even get the glass of water. Why is she walking over here? It's, it's weird. And the moment that these footsteps got to my bedroom door, uh, it transformed from human footsteps into the sound of something uh, shuffling on all fours around my bed in a big circle like this, like scratching on the carpet, which was obviously really scary. And I hopped literally the moment that I heard that hopped up and I grabbed my phone like mom mom like what are you doing like what the hell I turned my flashlight on there's no one there and my sister Tessa and my mom ran out of her room across the hall instantly into my room and said what's going on why are you being so loud and they had both been asleep that entire time and those are the only two women in the house so that was definitely a really creepy experience and that was the first time that I really you know started to get spooked out but it only got worse from there I started to see shadow figures in the room very tall 
one or two at a time, always I'd be looking through my blinds and I could see the moon coming through and the light from the moon and I could always see these figures. And this one time I saw the figure literally clear as day standing right there in front of my blinds and I'm like, I'm so skeptical about some of this stuff that it's like I, I, in my mind rationally I was like, this, there's no way this can be happening, that's not a shadow figure or you know, a person standing there. But I just remember it's it's when you think about like a horror movie and you say like why aren't you screaming right now you're about to be killed you're like you're, you're trying to judge a character based on what they're doing when they're supposed to be extremely frightened having an experience like that in real life really shows you that your mind does not act rationally when these things happen to you for example when I saw that shadow figure I'm sitting there in bed like laying back and this thing actually for the first time that night start walking, well not walking, like gliding towards my bed at a very slow pace and I'm sitting there staring at it, watching it get bigger and bigger as it's like coming towards me and I'm thinking like, dude I need to turn the light on, I need to turn the light on but I was so afraid that I couldn't move any part of my body and it just kept getting closer and closer and like I finally just snapped out of it and I reached and I turned my lamp on and it disappeared. So that was like, once again, these, these things kept happening night after night and my sister Tessa and I were telling my parents like dude there's something going on here and they didn't believe us it was like a horror movie where the characters are you know saying oh man like I'm hearing and seeing this stuff and the parents or someone's like oh no you're just seeing things blah 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 but then eventually it happened to them and after they had their experiences we finally thought it was time to talk to Donna and Donna is the family friend psychic. She's been in a lot of episodes of the show. So my mom and I went to get a reading from her one day and without us even bringing up the house, she said, I think you have two male figures in your house. And that was really creepy because we hadn't told her anything about what we had been experiencing. And so my mom and I ended up that day going down to the courthouse in Sioux Falls, uh, like we did in the Lost Graves episode. We went down there. And my mom and I went upstairs and talked to the historians there at the courthouse and asked them if we could see the city records and the planning uh, spreadsheets for the city from back in what would have been the 1800s when there were pioneers and people living on you know small ranches and homesteads out here. And they found a building that was on the property. It was an old house, a log cabin, most likely owned by a family. And we actually found the names of the family members and Strangely enough, this is what was so bizarre to us. In this family, there, were a, there was a mom, a daughter, a father, and a son. Now, the mother and the daughter had birth, death, and burial records that they knew at the courthouse where they were buried, but the father and son only had the birth records. So, these historians there at the courthouse theorized that the father and the son were potentially buried somewhere on our land and had been there for a long time because they didn't know where they were buried and maybe they had gotten a disease or something like that and before a cemetery was established they had actually just been buried somewhere around here. And there's also this history of Native American encampments right, we're right along the river so there were camps made by Native Americans and they said that there was a potential that the house was built on artifacts that it could have you know dug through stuff like that and they could have accidentally destroyed something like that potentially even they didn't think that they could have destroyed a body, but they could have if they dug through it. And you know that these construction companies just want to get through with the projects and get the money. So that was really strange to us. And this all culminated with this activity getting worse and worse. Me seeing these shadow figures, hearing voices, footsteps. I'm talking like a horror movie level of activity. My sister and I were like at our wits end. And the day before my birthday, we had Donna and three of her psychic medium uh, friends that she works with come over and we walked room through room through the entire house. She cleansed the home and we thought that it was all over after that. Well, that night our internet went out, our electricity went out for a while and it was my birthday so I had friends over and at about two, three in the morning, we were all downstairs asleep. We heard this massive just bang on the window like, like super loud, it shook the whole house. My parents came running downstairs, like, what the hell happened? Like, are you guys okay? And none of us knew what it was. It was snowing out, 
and we looked for a bird to see if a bird had hit any of the windows. There's no bird, there's no animal, there's no tracks. That's why I said it was snowing, because we could see if there's tracks or if a bird had hit the window and died. There's nothing, it was all fresh snow. And so the next day we were at a restaurant here in Sioux Falls, and we go into the restaurant, and the only people in this entire place, like literally the only people eating there, uh, were the psychics from the day before, Donna and her friends, and they were eating there. And we're like, what are you guys doing here? They're like, oh, great to see you. And before we could say anything to them, Donna asked me, did you guys have a bang on your window around two or three in the morning? And like all of our faces just dropped. We're like, yeah, we did. And she just looked at us and said, we all had the same thing happen. That's why we're here talking about it. We thought that maybe that was the energy releasing or giving us a sign that it was leaving, but it happened to all of us and we were freaked out. And it's crazy that you showed up here and said that that happened to you because that just correlates everything. I think when we realized that both Colin and Tessa were feeling uncomfortable in the house and everybody just was kind of on edge, the kids didn't want to be in the house alone, and it was affecting both of them, losing sleep, having to get up for school, and Donna's always been a friend of our family, and so Colin and I had just an appointment with Donna, and then that's when she started to tell us about the history and that there were two male presents in the house. Presences. Presences. Spirits. <laughs> I don't know. Which totally freaked us out. So we ended up having Donna come over and I guess cleanse the house and help us work through what spirits were here based on the land that we built the house on and not really the house itself. And in the end it just felt uh, like she didn't cleanse the house. It felt lighter and, and uh, just, you know, like there wasn't really anything here after that, you know. So that's kind of what I remember is that just it felt light and and cheery to me, I guess would be maybe a word, instead of kind of gloomy or dark. It had gotten a lot better and we really didn't have any activity for maybe a couple months, maybe up to about a year. And then slowly things started to happen again. So. After it got cleansed, can you talk about how you felt? Um, I guess when Donna came and cleansed our house, I was very scared and nervous because she said a lot of the activity was happening in my room, in Colin's room. So I felt kind of relieved that she said they were harmless spirits. But I guess from then after, I was... I mean, the activity kind of lessened, and we didn't see or hear that much a whole lot after, so I think she would probably helped in the long run, but I mean, we still hear stuff from time to time, so it's still happening, but even more recently, me and my best friend were staying in my basement, and it was really late at night, I'd say like well, in, well into like 2 a.m., and we were just watching TV, hanging out, and it was pitch dark all around the house and no lights were on. And basically we just heard a dragging on the floor. It sounded like someone or something was being dragged across the floor. And so we both just kind of paused the movie and stopped and looked at each other and we were really freaked out. And it lasted for about like 30 seconds. And so we got really creeped out and yelled to see if anyone was there, if my dad was being stupid or anything and no one was there so we got super freaked out and obviously went upstairs and slept but there's been several times where we've heard dragging across the floor and footsteps so pretty creepy even recently you've found some nights it's kind of hard to stay in your room yeah even recently i've heard different footsteps in the kitchen i mean there's always something happening in this house and there's always activity. When it comes to the spirits, I'd say that I've never felt in danger when it comes to my experiences with them, but um, I don't think that they're here to harm us or disturb us in any ways. So yeah, I guess 
they're good, but... But you still think it's freaky in the yeah, house? Yeah, but I'm still very freaked out by what I've experienced in this house, and I'm definitely okay with moving. And you don't like being in here alone? No, I will not stay in here alone. And at nighttime, it's very creepy. We really didn't have any activity for maybe a couple months, maybe up to about a year. And then slowly, things started to happen again. And Jeff and I were in the bedroom one day, just talking. And we were in our closet, we have a walk-in closet. And all of a sudden, one of, we had a, just a plastic glass on our nightstand. And that came off the nightstand and flew across the bathroom floor. And we thought Tessa was in the house. Yeah, just like roll across. Yeah, across. and it was just, Someone threw it. yeah, and it wasn't like it fell because <clears throat> we had carpet in there. It was something you had to actually throw it because then it went rolling across and hit the wall. So that was totally freaky. Yeah. And then just started to hear like we'd be watching TV downstairs and footsteps, and so we'd always stop the whatever we're watching and ask, you know, if Jeff's home or is Tessa home, and never have anybody home. I quieted down for a while after uh, we got the house cleansed, but when I was coming home from college, then the next couple summers, my friends and I, we would go out back and do Ouija board sessions all the time. That was what we did for fun. We weren't filming it, we were recording it. We were just interested in the paranormal. And a couple of these times we had very extreme experiences. We did homemade Ouija boards. Uh, uh, this one time we actually, I can't remember the word because it was so long ago, but we got a word that just seemed so odd that we had to look it up. And it had actually spelled out a name in Sioux, Lakota Sioux, uh, in Native American in the language they speak. And it was, uh, it meant something warrior. It was, it was so weird. It was like a very specific name uh, and word in their language. And we're like, oh my God, that's like really freaky. And we kept talking to it. And what it seemed like it was saying was that it was a Lakota Sioux warrior who had died in battle uh, or potentially lived in the area, which makes sense with the Native American camps thing that we had learned earlier at the courthouse. And this was so trippy that night. Everyone got freaked out because we had a candle. We asked it to blow out the candle and like the flame literally went from this, just shrunk down and snuffed out. And I was with Nick, who's been on the show, and a couple other friends of ours. And he got really freaked out because it was the first time we, did, we had done a Ouija board that really worked like that. And he was like, I need to quit. So we closed the circle and whatnot. And so this is probably my one of my favorite paranormal experiences I've ever had, if not like the clearest thing to me. But I was sitting in my room, once again at the end of the hallway, and I had locked my door, and I'm sitting there on my phone, trying to go to bed, it was about three in the morning, I was just freaked out by what happened. And my lamp next to my bed just went out like that, like it was on, and it just shut off, and I was in the pitch black. I'm like, okay, that's really freaky, what the hell? And I turned my light on on my phone and I just expected the lamp to be out like the bulb burned out or something. So I went and I flipped the, the switch on the lamp on off on off on off and I realized that it wasn't an issue with the lamp because I looked down on the ground and the actual plug to plug into the wall had been yanked out of the wall and it was like this far from the lamp. It had not just fallen onto the ground. It had been violently pulled out. And like I said, my door was locked. And I took a photo of it and it's way back in my memories. But it's like that kind of stuff, you, it's like personal experiences that you're not filming. It's stuff that I have never filmed for the show. I couldn't have filmed because it just happened. But it was so strikingly real that it's always been there in my mind. And it's like one of those things that just convinced me of, you know, the existence of this stuff because it's very real. But I haven't been in the house as much as everyone else has because I've been off in college. But um, it just, every time that I come back, it seems like more stuff happens. Like the last time we were here, my parents called me and Jeff had his experience where something ran at him across this floor right here and they were hearing voices and all throughout 
my time, you know, when I've been living in Austin, they've called me probably 100, 200 times just to tell me stories about something that happened. Yeah, I mean, I had, you know, just a number of knocks and bangs and, you know, things that I'd be watching TV downstairs and like, like a glass fell on the floor and there'd never be anything up here when I'd come up and look. Um, recently I had, when Mary and Tessa were gone, I was, uh, I was sleeping in the master bedroom back here and, and it literally sounded like somebody was running from the hallway to my room, like just literally. I got louder and stopped at my door and I thought there was actually someone in the house when, as I, I told you, I got up and got actually a handgun that I never ever have done before and I had to go around the whole house. I thought someone was in the house and then I for I think you were gone maybe two or three days, and, and I, I actually, you know, slept with a handgun on the nightstand next to me, which I've never done before. Okay, so this is what you had that night? This is it. You were packing. Yeah, nine millimeter clock. Usually I keep it in my gun safe, so I just slept. Sleep in, had the door closed, came up to there. I got up, stopped, and went right in there and grabbed it. And then I came back out. You know, the door was, the door was like this. So it pitch black. I just kind of opened the door. That's kind of what I did all the way through the house. Crazy, was that real? Yeah, yeah. Had That's a gun. Yep, and then it was a couple more nights that I slept with it. Because you were all alone. Yeah. Weren't you hearing banging outside the window too? Yeah, I heard some bangs outside the window. Um, on that window, actually. Almost like there was someone outside, right? Right, yeah. Yeah, but, well, kind of like someone, you know, I, I would say someone maybe throwing something at the window instead of like, you know, banging on creepy yeah so that was very very weird and I called these guys each day to kind of give you an update like I said hear more noises um, and I just kind of you just kind of got used to just ignoring them you know but uh, lots of boy lights and shadows and noises we had some I was going down by Tessa's bedroom just to put clothes away too and I heard the men's voices were back and I thought mm -hmm. that they were probably building, they were building the house next door and so I thought they must be construction guys so I just went and looked out Tessa's bathroom window which is right next to mm -hmm. on that side of the house. Nobody, there wasn't anybody around and so but I could mm -hmm. clearly hear men talking and it is in that area that she would hear close to her closet so. I think we just had so many, we've had so many things happen like you just kind of get used to it yeah. shadow it's like yeah. you know it's not like I'm afraid of anything I mean the, the episode I told you about someone running towards my room that actually I had my heart racing I thought someone would actually hear and they obviously weren't but most of the time it's a noise or a shadow um, you know even a TV yet will go on or anything like that I, you just kind of get used to it, you know, and in an odd way, you kind of live with it and think it's just spirits that are here, you know. Hello, I'm Jackson Dice. I'm Colin's friend from when we were a wee bit young, and I've been in this house ever since they first got it, really, and I don't know, the, the biggest thing that I noticed when I first got here is that the whole back area, it's like only a bit of it is actually concrete and living area and the rest of it is just trees and just looking out into like the abyss of nothing. Every once in a while we'll go and we'll like hot tub outside and we'll just chill out there during the night with some friends and I've always thought it's just a bit eerie out there and it's never been comforting. It's definitely not just something like, I don't know, especially super late at night is when we're normally hanging out and that is just kind of uh, adds to the effects. I've slept over here multiple times in high school and sometimes in middle school and 
uh, the guest bedroom downstairs is just always just super creepy to me because everyone is upstairs and I'm the only one downstairs. It's different. It's different, yeah. I've been around, we've done a lot of Ouija boards around here and we've gone out to different burial sites like uh, Gitche Manitude, which is a place that we used to go and it's known to be haunted in the Sioux Falls area. And coming back, I feel like something always gets brought back with us and I feel like it's never just, it just doesn't feel normal. Especially like with Colin, like even just being around him, that's probably one of the biggest things is like he goes on all these investigations and stuff and it's like he's bringing all these spirits behind him and now they're just like gonna attach onto me and like murder me at night while they're, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it's attached to the house, it might be attached to me, maybe I have something that is attached to me that I bring along with me and it pisses whatever is here off. I have no explanation because I don't understand how this stuff works. I'm not going to pretend to know uh, how it works, but it's definitely some sort of an energy because it constantly manifests. Even some of my friends used to not want to even step foot in the basement because they thought it was too creepy. I've had people come up to my room in the middle of the night from the basement and knock on my door and ask if they can sleep in my room with me because they were hearing noises. In my room I have all these weird relics from travels. I have like cemetery dirt from Salem that I collected, a bunch of twigs from Sleepy Hollow, this devil mask from Mexico that the guy that I bought the mask from said was haunted. I have these masks from Puerto Rico that supposedly ward off evil spirits. And that, the list just goes on and on, all this memorabilia and, and weird stuff. So I feel like that also could be drawing the energy in to that part of the house just because there's all these weird macabre relics. I just had so many things happen in the room, just hearing the voices, and even sometimes I'd wake up in the middle of the night and see a glowing white light above my door, where the, uh, I had the devil mask that's supposedly haunted, where that thing was hanging, I kept seeing this white glowing light, and I didn't have my contacts on, so I couldn't really see, but it was there, and I could just see it glowing and glowing, and I'd turn my lamp on, and it would go away, and I'd turn it back off, and it would be there. But at the end of the day, I just, I don't know what's in the house, but it, it, it's always followed me. It's, the question has always haunted me of who or what is here and why won't they leave? Like, what do they want? But it's, it, it, to me, it's always been a mixture of interesting and like not scary and like really scary activity. Because there have been times when we've been in this house when I've wanted to leave because the paranormal activity has been way too intense and way too frightening and every person in my family will tell you that because we've all been scared shitless by whatever lives inside this house with us. But what can you do? Uh, there's not really you know, much more to my side of the story. There's just countless incidents but it's hard to remember them all because they all blend together. But yeah, that's my... I guess, quarter of the family haunting story. Do you have anything else that's happened when I was in college? I know you've had a lot more. It just always seemed like it would get more active when you came mm -hmm. home. Mm -hmm. Like it would not be as much. Once in a while we would call you and say, like that glass fell, or you think you hear something fall in the laundry room. Mm -hmm. But it always seemed to pick up. So I think you might Interesting. Mm -hmm. But you still enjoyed your time here. I guess I love this house. Yeah. I never yeah. felt yeah. scared or, I mean, I would be, yeah, would be a little bit scared, but I, yeah, it's a beautiful house, beautiful area. We've got a beautiful view and we had a lot of happy memories here. Yeah. But it's still haunted. It's still something definitely in this house. There are stories that we had to leave out for time, but at this point, I think that you can tell that our house was extremely haunted. Maybe there are some graves in the undeveloped woods next to our house, or some relics still in the dirt beneath it. That's something that we will never have a chance to dig into. I dug through my phone archives and managed to find a few old clips of paranormal activity happening, from TVs glitching to multiple nights where our house alarms alerted in the middle of the night as if someone had opened the front door. Okay, I'm 
I'm just sitting upstairs playing guitar, not even touching the remote. And I keep, I just did the spirit ceremony last night to invoke spirits. And I keep pausing the TV. And then. I don't know how much longer, but in like a little bit, it, it keeps coming unpaused. And both, right there. I have no idea how that's happening. Both my parents are outside. You can see my mom down there watering. And she's talking to my dad right now. I just came to turn my light on me here. And of course my light. Jesus Christ. The light. We had some really good times in our house. Animals would just come and die on our property. We found deer impaled on the gates around our house, rabbits mauled and decapitated left right at our front door by neighborhood cats, and even dead pets on the street. This should show you that there was definitely something strange about the property. That's why, earlier this year, we reunited the original group of psychics who originally cleansed our house, including my friend Donna O'Day, and had them return for another read of the home five years later. physical discomfort, quite, uh, quite a lot actually. Uh, there's, <clears throat> there's somebody here um, with us right now who had extreme nervous problems and sometimes would actually faint, would just faint uh, from that from that issue. It feels like a woman. Um, she's, she's, been, she's been in this house probably for about a year. She's here for, she's here for help. She's here for medical help. Do you, do you sometimes hear like uneven walking? Do you hear sometimes strange sounds like that on the floor? Mm-hmm. That's her. That's Mary in the other room saying yes. Yes, it always sounds like people okay, are watching. she can't. She, I, I'm going to have to hang on to something. Uh, no, it's okay. I'll just, I'll just hang on to something. But, oh, God. Okay. Um... She's, uh, she's... She's looking at me right now, and uh, she's saying, "Well, I certainly hope you can help me." She said, "She's been she's been long enough like this," and she said, "Now you know how I feel. Now you know, now you know how I shake." She said, "Nobody ever knew that. Nobody ever believed me when I was when I was living." I'm a little angry. Yeah, at me. I didn't do anything to her. Um, we're going to have a little trouble helping her, I think. Do you ever have corn on the cob? Jeff? Yeah, you have a lot of corn. Corn on the cob? <laughs> okay. And you, and you cook it here? In, in your kitchen? You, but you haven't had any recently. 
Well, how long do you expect her to wait? She, yeah, she's, she's waiting for corn on the cob. Yeah, she said, it's, it's bad enough nobody can see me, nobody pays any attention to me. I go like this, nobody pays any attention to me, and she said, here I am shaking and shaking, and all I want is a corn on the cob. Does it feel like someone who's attached to the house or to she's one of us? Here for about a year. Did, did you visit some farmland about a year ago? Almost a year ago, we went to um, Edinburgh, Edinburgh Manor in Iowa, which is an old poor farm, which help, are housed mentally unstable patients. That's where you got her. What Donna says here is extremely strange because just last year we visited the notorious Edinburgh Manor in Iowa, an abandoned poor farm and mental institution. The property around Edinburgh Manor is 100% farmland, and to get to the building you have to drive 15 minutes through straight grass and crops. crazy that she was able to pinpoint this location as a possible source of her haunting. Okay, she followed you. She followed you home. And that's what I've always felt a lot of the spirits have been. People that have mm -hmm. been with us when we've been mm -hmm. in these places and have come back and they like the house. Well, she, she, um, she thought she was going to get uh, some medical attention finally, she says. Finally, because nobody would listen to her. And then she said, then you can't hear me. You can't see me. Mostly right now, I think she just wants to break. Um, and is she in this room specifically? She's here, she's in this room. Oh, she's transferring those feelings to me again. Ay, 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 ay. Okay, now she's starting to cry. And she's saying, I don't mean to hurt people. I don't mean to scare people. She said, all I want is help. Can you help me? I think we can, but she'll have to listen to us. She'll have to listen to what we say. She'll have to do what we say. She's pointing at you, Colin. And she's saying, you, you. You should know, you should know. She goes, I mean, she went from sympathy and quiet to now she's angry again. You should know what to do, you should know what to do. She's kind of nasty, okay? She's mad at all of us. Wow, she, now she's, this is at me now. She said, you're the big fat ex expert. Why don't you do something? Holy mackerel, what are we gonna do with her? What can we do? Does anyone else feel really hot? Or is it temperate I in was, here? but I'm not so hot now. Cause I'm, I'm like sweating this whole time since I came in the house. I'm like just covered in sweat for some reason. Okay, well I think what we should do is um, we should all form a circle. Okay. And um, put her in the middle. I'm gonna keep hanging on to this. Bertha or Beatrice?
okay, then there's there's a little dog that just get this is not a big dog, this is a little dog, uh, like a wire hair. Uh, he doesn't need to be groomed, but he's bouncing around in here. Um, does anybody recognize Coco? What oh, the? <laughs> that's he, and he's dead too. Yeah, okay. Whoa. Okay, that, that's, that's Coco. Okay, I am covered with chills and I Same, to same. Oh, Whoa. Feels better compared to what I've been through. I'm feeling really hot. Yeah, me too. I'm yeah, sweaty, sweaty, so sweaty. So we got, okay, sorry, sorry. She, she's going like this and so is your grandma. Oh, she's like, oh, nonsense. I never knew her, but I believe her. <laughs> <laughs> she's saying something to this woman. She's talking to her privately. The rest of us don't have to hear that. Privately, okay. She's whatever she said. She's responding to that, and this this woman who's here, who's asking for our help, wants our help, and doesn't want our help. We can help her to understand that if she goes to the light that there's a lot more she'll know, that she'll be able to see around corners. Mm -hmm. yeah. If she goes to the light, she won't have to scare people. She won't have to be angry. And she said, oh, I get it, I get it. And she's absolutely lighting up. And she said, I didn't understand this. I never understood this. She said, that's why I was sick in the first place. She said, life is not about yourself, getting for yourself. She said, life is about helping other people. That's what it's about. I miss that, I miss that completely. She said, now I get it. And her whole demeanor has changed. And she's saying thank you to all of us. And she's going with Grandma and Walter. Mm -hmm. Coco. She's going. I've had something in my right leg this whole time. It's like all my hairs are saying that I got this white. I don't have anything here, I don't think, you know? That must have been Coco. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. You've, like, oh, you've got a fresh this. scratch right there. Is <laughs> of some sort. Like on my leg. Huh. Just like, like yeah. my hair is like. You didn't scratch yourself? No. Unless. Let me see your dog. My other leg. My sister's dog. See, nothing oh, yeah. on that. It's nothing on that. Completely clean. Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, you've got like, yeah. yeah. White scratches right there. Yeah, that's what you said at the beginning too. Wow. Okay. Well, that's. I think that's your problem. I brought my little uh, amulet. Oh, we have to use that. <laughs> you know, this is so it's strange. Ancient. It's, yeah. This is ancient. <laughs> you want to know it's really odd, though? What? Today, the episode we released, this is so bizarre, was the first time we've used an ovulus since our last episode oh, with you. Really? I, didn't, I didn't ask her to bring that either. No, I saw that too. Really? Yeah. I, we just released that today. It was supposed to be out yesterday, but we were traveling. Yeah, so. we were going out the door, and I just you thought, hey. And I ran back in and got this. Oh. Wow. Yeah. That was amazing. So, mm -hmm. cool. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow. Well. Anything else, George? No. I have goosebumps, but not Jesus. And if you don't feel like there's anything, then you can just say that. Well, I do know. And I think it's somebody from the Civil War. Um. Does, does anybody uh, collect old guns, like old musket, or did anybody have anything like that? My dad does. Your dad does? does. Has a musket? Uh, I think so. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, I had an uncle that collected a huge gun collection. Did he have, like, old? Yeah. Huge, I mean, like... Like the kind he would go? Yeah. Like, he had, um, you know... I think there would be like 
probably Civil War all the way. Yeah. But he would do um, okay, like almost museum quality. Okay, he's pieces. crossed over. Yes, he yeah. He's yeah, uh, he's the one who's been here, and he's the one who chased you that night. He was not a very nice guy. Oh, that, mm. that really? Chris oh, Langdon, uh -huh. my cousin, mm -hmm. and uh, who I just got. I've never seen him for like probably 30 years. I'd go out to their lake home, and he'd mm -hmm. have guns like every space you could be. There'd be guns, all the walls. Well, yeah, it's him. But he would. Be, okay, and you're anti-gun. He would beat up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he would beat up the, like beat him, and I'd have to take him, and he would be drinking, you know, mm -hmm. all the time. He was mean. Yeah, I was yeah, afraid of him. And yeah, he chased after Jeff then too. When you think about it, because none of us have ever had anybody run yeah, up on us. That, yeah. Just, you know, yeah. Thinking about it. Mm-hmm. It's him. Whew. Yeah. And we can really, you know, speak to him on his level, and just tell him to get the hell out of here. He can't hurt you anymore. He absolutely cannot. He's like a puff of wind. And he knows that, and that's why he's so angry. He was power obsessed, and you're not like that at all. And yet, and yet, you're more powerful because you're not like that. It takes real strength to give up the guns and to give up the hate. Yeah, yeah I've always said that about my cousin. I, it's like, um, it's weird he would come up. He's actually on my phone from a couple days ago. Mm -hmm. Showing him a picture, and I haven't seen a picture of him forever. Uh, I'll be darned. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and my other uncles and stuff, I've always said, you know, my dad died when I was five. Yeah. And his mm -hmm. mother died when he was like five. Mm -hmm. and I said, well, you know, you made a big thing of your life, you know, you became an optometrist and made money, mm -hmm. blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. And they kind of left him behind, you know, uh -huh. but his dad was me, you know, and mm -hmm. I always, like, sympathized with him and always kind of stood up for him, uh -huh. you know, like, it's my, got tons of cousins that were kind of against him, but I was always like, man, he had a hard life. I mm -hmm. saw him beat up, mm -hmm. you know, many, many mm -hmm. times. But yeah, anyway, he was very protective of his guns, you know, like if you touched one or anything, it had to be right, like, you know, you walk into a room and you move the thing a little bit, mm -hmm. he would accuse us of doing that, you know, things like that. And he would, I just remember him, he beat him in the back and I'd grab him and we'd run and, oh boy. so yeah, that's mm -hmm. scary. Oh, that's so really yeah, so a lot of emotion generated there. Oh. Well, I don't scary. think he'll bother you in this house anymore. And if you hear that again, because yeah. he is kind of ornery, yeah. tell him to get the hell out of here. He has to go. But I don't think you can be, now you really shouldn't be here. Mm -hmm. You know, you're yeah. going to have to talk to him on his level or he, he yeah. won't hear you. Yeah, that's where I would get a gun too. Mm -hmm. Like I never, ever done. That you never do. Mm -hmm. Never have done. That. Uh, yeah, that night you got a gun. Yeah, never mm -hmm. have. Yeah. Done. I've never yeah. Had wow. A gun. Oh. Mm -hmm. Do you have any bullets for it? Yeah. Yeah. I okay. don't. I don't. So, do you know a Charles? It's here. Mm. Goodbye. String. <laughs> a string. Remember last time we were in here. Donna said she saw those strings yeah, coming yes. down from the ceiling. That's weird. And nice yeah, that's really odd, isn't that? And it says a goodbye. It was when she yeah. finally cleansed whatever was in the room. You said at the end you saw the strings yes. coming down from the ceiling. Goodbye. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There was there was a goodbye mm -hmm. on the ovulus that oh, you had. Oh, maybe it's because we're in this room. It's Maybe That's such a weird. I just remember weird. that vividly from that yeah. her saying that uh -huh. seeing strings coming from the oh, ceiling. Man, you guys remember? Cause <laughs> I don't know it's just mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't. And then didn't it was a woman, right? Didn't the woman see Jesus? Mm -hmm. Yes, woman, yes. Right? Uh huh. It went wow or something. Yes. Yep. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. See, I don't remember any of that. You probably think of it later. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was just I was just trying mm -hmm. to think of. What? Well, 
just people call me Chuck all the time. You know? What? Yeah. They miss T. All the time. Yeah. Like, you when you, yeah. Everywhere, if it's Greece or New York or is, is Chuck short for Charles? Yes. yes. Really? Yes. yes. It's like an ongoing yeah. joke for years. Oh my God. So many times. Oh. And actually, I had a wireless internet uh, come up on our airplane flight that was Chuck to, you know, oh, well, with the name of the internet. Uh -huh. I've yeah. done it. It's been a hundred times. Oh my God. Oh, okay, People so I know Chuck. what this this was coming from your uncle, mm. and um, have you been jogging? Jogging? Yeah. Running to the airport? Just at the airport. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, though, I yeah. I was like, you're giving me a lot of crap over because oh. I was like, complete, yeah, I was thought I was going to have a heart attack. Yeah. <laughs> Yesterday, last time. Yeah. Oh, I'm like, I can't, I keep mm -hmm. going. I can't. Oh. And I'm like, Jeff, we have to I run. Can't. We have to go. I can't. I got to stop because I'm not going to die. No, pay attention to that. Yeah. 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 But, okay, so I think that what we're getting here is um, get the lead out, Chuck. <laughs> no. Oh. Wow. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No kidding. Yeah. Wow. That's what Colin basically yeah. was telling me. So. Mm -hmm. oh. Don't really make freaky. me discover it. Yeah. What did it say? It said lead. But okay, so I think that what we're getting here is um, get the lead out, Chuck. <laughs> oh. oh, wow. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No kidding. Yeah. Wow. That's what Colin basically yeah. was telling me. So. Mm -hmm. oh. Well, should we go to a go to yeah. Colin? Yeah. Sure. Yeah. In this room, I've always felt also had um, just negative energy. Yeah. This yeah, is yeah. where. Yeah. This is the Ouija mm -hmm. board. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And my friend, he saw a mask fly off the wall. Oh. I heard a woman, or not a woman, just something crawling on all fours around the bed. Like the second week that we moved in, I always yeah, used to this see. doesn't mm -hmm. have the greatest energy. Mm -mm. Even to this day, it doesn't. Yeah. Just sleeping yeah. in here, hear totally stuff. <laughs> oh, that. That, that what was good. We bought in Salem. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's not the best, but we no. just, Colin thought it looked cool. Uh, right, what, so. what is that? It's, it's well, not. I think we're thinking of somebody, actually. Well, you can't be. You're supposed to burn it. You want to know? Yeah. I might suggest you burn that thing. Donna, he has a mask just like you do. From Puerto Rico. Oh, oh like the one you, yeah, the yeah. one you brought. Yeah. And yeah, we were in Puerto Rico. Yep. Yeah. yeah, I just got that a couple months ago. Oh. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I saw those. I was like, Whoa. yes. <laughs> yes. Okay. And that's a mask that flew off the wall, too. Oh, really? Back when. Yeah, that gives me yeah. goosebumps because we were getting a hat mm -hmm. again on the hat stores down in Old San Juan, mm -hmm. and one of those flew off. And the guy just who was making the hat just picked it up and he goes, Oh, other evil spirit to put it up. Because oh. oh, they're supposed to attack spirits, mm. ward it off. Oh, ward off, yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. But so probably what it was doing. That's really I weird. I don't know what they're called. There's a special name for them. Oh. We got I, Ooh, I got a little chilly. Yeah. yeah. We, got uh -huh. we got the little, yeah, the little feather I had, the feather in my head. No. It could be that somebody who was building the room, you know, that had some bad energy going on, something awful happened in their life, and the walls remember, the wood remembers. This room also gets and very hot. Always hot. Always hot. Mm -hmm. No matter what. Even last night. This is a, uh -huh. Yeah. yeah, I wouldn't want to spend a lot of time in here. Well, thanks, Donna. <laughs> 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 well, now that you'll be moving. Yeah, <laughs> tomorrow. Should we see if we get anything on the ambulance? Sure. Provide show. Provide show. Is Tessa home? Mm -hmm. She's not there. What are you going to do with this information? You're gonna put it in the show? Yeah. <laughs> oh. Film it. I just started rolling That's again. Weird. Literally. I paused it. Can I take a picture? Sure, please. <laughs> Stay. Man, I need to get an Oculus again. Well, hurry up. <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> okay. Did you get there it? you go. Yep, we got it. Okay. Did you hear it?
Yeah. Yeah. Basement. 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 Well, Tessa's in the basement. You she doesn't feel good. Yeah, like, we could take yeah. that down there. Mm-hmm. No, you, no. Yeah. 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 That's weird that also seems to focus on Tessa mm-hmm. a lot of times, and she's in the basement yeah. right now. Yeah. And she wants nothing yeah. to do with it. Yeah. Oh, she's she's scary. selling a lot of these. But nothing overall you feel in here? Nothing. Well, I don't feel anything good in here, and I just wouldn't soon get out of here. Yeah. Just, I felt like I was yeah. being mm-hmm. stabbed a while. Just more oh. en- just energy? Yeah, that's a bad energy yeah. room. It's energy. 100%. Okay. Well, I used to have all the um, relics, too. That I collected in here. Do you have this happen in Austin? Yeah, our apartment is very haunted. Southern just said oh. Texas. Oh, oh. Weird. Oh. What are the odds of that happening? Southern. Right when they asked about my or our apartment. But as a whole, would you say that it doesn't feel nearly as uh, full of energy as it did before because I feel like the first time it was every room we it had everywhere. Remember in the kitchen had cut my finger that day Yeah, and you instantly came in and said Who's got a cut on their finger and I was holding the camera like this and it, I it appeared on my hand because I didn't know How it even happened. It was like it's right here. And you're like, oh Wait, just been arguing about it. Like, I was Yep telling you, you had to let a lot You know, how could you not notice that huge cut? We were late getting here came behind you guys and the dog walks and goes, somebody have a cut right here, oh, right on your exact finger. I yep. oh my God. I'm just lucky my finger didn't bleed because sometimes it does. Oh. Huh. So when, when, yeah. Uh, Interesting, yeah, it is. I mean, do you know where you're going? No. no. Going, wow. What? I just said that. Oh. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> and you literally said going yeah. Yeah. as it yeah. said going. Yeah. You literally said, you know where you're going? And it said going. Well, my point is you should bless the house that you move into. Okay. You should bless it and, um, like, dedicate it to your family so you don't get this kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Good energy. Yeah, that's a big word. Mm-hmm. Sacra res. Sacra res? What is that? How's it spelled? S A C R A R E F. Sacred. Yeah, okay. Because that's um, sacred. No, it's S A C R A P E S, isn't it? No. Sacra. No, that's an R. Sacra res. Sacra uh, the sacred reality lying behind the sign, for this sacred reality is the thing signified a sacrament, since St. Augustine is the sign of a sacred reality. That's a really weird word. Yeah. <laughs> right, we were talking about angels. Angels, too. Wow. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Can I see that? Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to give you an eye test. Yeah. <laughs> wow, that's a really weird word. But overall, you'd say better energy in here better definitely but i think everyone the consensus was over there was Whoa. felt worse yeah that was and then the heat and the yeah and when the lady was mm-hmm. here that was yeah. weird mm-hmm. i'm even just getting hot out here again i am too suddenly hot. i'm cold again. no mudroom yep no you have some very busy spirits out here. Wow. Do you feel any other human spirits in the area? Hmm. Helping spirits? No, I don't feel any humans at all. Anything else we can do? I don't think so. Mm-mm. Oh, yeah, I, don't I, I, I like to take a bath. Like, uh-huh. I'm like a bath guy. Like, yeah. like every night. Relax. Beautiful view. I have a lot of and I, I I see things like over here all the time, like someone's passed by. Mm. Like I've seen that too in here, and I've I've taken a bath a couple times in here. Were you beaten as a kid? Um, well, I had an abusive stepfather that was mm. alcoholic, and but I wasn't beaten like my like my cousin, mm. but I was beaten verbally, 
Oh, a lot. Did he sneak up on you? Um, this sounds really weird, but uh, you know, he would come to my door at night uh, and stand outside my door, and he would. Uh, yeah, Why just did something? Yeah, yeah. 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 did you yeah. yeah. do no. no. But he would actually mm -hmm. uh, pass gas. Oh, that's okay. Tacky. Yeah, okay. Tacky. Yeah. 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 This is what I'm doing now. Yeah. This is beautiful. I have a beautiful life. Mm -hmm. And concentrate on the moment. Mm -hmm. Stay in the moment. Yeah, I had a dream with him uh, that I went up in my attic and he was on his bed. And he was mm -hmm. very peaceful. Mm -hmm. And he apologized to me Good. in my dream. Good. It was, and I woke up like, oh. Yeah. Yeah. Like, he can apologize, like he had, but. His sin, like, you know. You know and, but um, it's like I tell people if somebody drops a rock, yeah. on your foot, yeah. doesn't matter why, and it doesn't ma matter if they say, I'm sorry, your foot is still hurts. Hurt. Yeah, no, it's and, that affected me it's lifelong. Yeah. Yeah. And so it doesn't have to anymore. Yeah. Well, what's weird is now that the ovulus says crystal, and those lights that just oh, flicker, so, yeah. it's yeah. literally surrounded by crystals. Yeah. And I think that said that before it happened too, almost like a... Mm -hmm. It predicted it in a weird way. Yeah. It, it happened like when you're talking to him yeah. right at the beginning. Well, see, nobody knows what electricity is. Nobody knows. I mean, we all talk about it, we all use it, but we don't know what it is. And I think it's a living intelligence. And I think it's the energy of the universe. I think it's electric. I agree. Said scientist Dr. <laughs> Which that's all I know about that. <laughs> Show. What the hell? Uh, really uh, just... uh, no, it was that oh. way. Oh, funny. That's funny. Why did it just do that? Did it just go oh, yeah. out? Well, the last room of the upstairs. Oh, uh, weren't you going to hate to leave this? No? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> This has a, a good energy. Good. Yeah, there's nothing negative in here. There's worry. Have you been worried? I'd say I have. Well, I mean, I could understand yeah. why, but I mean, it's a chronic thing. And we really don't have any place that we're going. Yeah. Uh huh. And so, yeah. It's, it's, well, I could see why you'd be worried, but this thing that kind of lives with you. Mm. Like an anxiety? Yeah, kind of thing. But that's that's all I feel in here. Do you have trouble sleeping then because of that? Because of the anxiety? Oh, um, not really. That's all. Anymore. I have a lot of trouble sleeping because of anxiety. Yeah. A lot of times. Yeah. Always just so much to do. Can't turn off. There's a light again. Yep. Okay, well, you guys probably need to go to sleep. Get <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. what Donna did was comforting, but I wanted answers. So, for my last night ever in my house, I decided to kick my family out and investigate the home completely alone, something that I had never actually done in the five years that we lived in the house. The footage that you are about to see is completely undoctored and raw. Okay guys, so as you probably already know, this is my last night ever in our house. This place has a lot of memories for me, but... Oddly enough, there was just a noise right there. Hello? And I was about to just say that. I don't think it's going to be active in here, but that was kind of weird. That came from the laundry area. Um, but I'm here in the house alone. And to end this episode, I'm just going to state right now that I don't think that this house's energy is something that can be investigated like we do normally on the show. 
it's not an always active energy it's very rarely present so I don't think I'm gonna really get any sort of you know evidence or answer to any of my questions when I'm here right now but I knew that people would want me to investigate so just for this final portion I'm here alone in the house it's pitch black I've turned out all the lights I'm actually a little creeped out because this place has always given me the creeps but I'm gonna walk down to the hallway where Tessa and I have always experienced this negative activity and emotion and I'm gonna ask a couple questions just to see if whatever's in here if it's here right now will respond to me and give me an answer that I've been looking for for the last five six years it almost looks like paranormal activity like the movies A lot of memories in here. Is there anybody in here with me? You're in here. It's been years now. We've never properly investigated the house. So can you step over to me? I know you've always wanted something from me. So what was it that you wanted? Like I said in the interview, the basement's always been pretty creepy. But this is where I'm gonna spend my amount of time. And there's my old high school yearbook and the signed poster for my graduation party. Of course, it is Ghostbusters. I just heard something out there, actually. Hello? To whoever is in this room and this end of the hallway, I don't know if I conjured you and brought you into this household through all of the Ouija boards I did, the strange and macabre items that I collected and brought into the house, or I don't know, maybe you are someone or something that was here in the land before I was even here in the first place. But this is the last chance you have to give me a message or to get at me before I leave forever. So if you have something to say or you have had something to say this whole time, I am begging you for an answer and I would like a polite interaction with you if you're here. I used to stand here every day in high school and think, Man, I wish I could have a successful paranormal YouTube channel. 
High school Colin would be proud. Can you knock on something or move something? If you are here in the house with me. There's not a noise on the hallway. There's anybody here with me. Definitely got that on camera too. Okay, something just moved out here. And I don't know if I would have to stop the tape, but I don't want to stop right now. I don't know if that was God, this looks so shitty in here. I'm sorry guys. I don't know if that was something I'm so hesitant to call something paranormal, but like I don't know what would have moved. Nothing looks like it moved in here. This is all just stuff that's been laying here. We just got back from Greece last night. This is my last night in the house, like I said. But that sounded like something like hitting this. I don't know. I'm gonna have to look back in the footage and see if any of this stuff uh, moved around. Or I don't know, it didn't even sound like something moving. It sounded like, almost like a knock. Weird timing too, with something in the hallway. That was loud though. There is not a noise on the hallway. There's anybody here with me. There's anybody here with me? Okay. Was that you in here? All of a sudden, I actually have a headache like right here. And I feel like it just got like colder. I'm actually, I was saying earlier that I was really hot, but now it's feeling like chilly for some reason. Everything from my childhood, zombie novels I used to read, my old Star Wars helmet that I painted with blood, the Wicker Man voodoo guy I got in Salem, my first electric guitar, like it, 2012, so it would have been a sophomore. Okay, that's me. There I am. Of course I'm in the crack. Sophomore year. Anyways, I'm gonna step into Tessa's room for a second. Is there anybody in this room who knows that they aren't welcome? Can you move something? Or use your voice? Just tell me who you are. It's been years. And I've been wondering who you are. I just heard a whisper over that guitar noise. Over that car noise. I just heard a knock right there. Remember, I'm home alone, guys. And this is creepy. No one actually wanted to come with me when I did this. Just hurt. Just 
something, but I don't know what it would be. Almost, almost like a whisper, but it came from this direction. This is the last time that I'm ever going to be here. So please, for me, can you tell me who you are and why you have followed me for so many years and at times tortured my family? Who are you? Goosebumps. there's anybody left in here please give me a sign this closet just gives me creepy vibes always has look at it, it just blurred out right on the closet This is your final chance to let me know who you are. Anything? Hallway definitely looks a little creepy. Well, like I said before, there's a lot of weird noises in here. Nothing extreme. Maybe I'll check the footage and find something, but I'm gonna call it a night for now. And uh, yeah, goodbye house. I loved you. That was fun. But there's always a time to move on. In the darkness, my house is a very scary place. Shadows seem to loom and dance on the walls, every noise becomes threatening, and even walking alone down the hallway to get some water in the middle of the night can occasionally become a nightmarish situation. But in the light, it's very different. I loved that house. It was beautiful, and it was the one place that I could return to and truly feel at home. Needless to say, I was extremely sad to see it pass over into new hands, but it had to happen. So it's 8.30 a.m. right now. This is the last time I'm ever gonna be in the house. Just gotta say, it's really bittersweet. I had so many really good memories here, and I was up last night with Jackson talking about everything and just reminiscing on all the fun and dumb shit that we did here. And it's crazy just thinking I'll never, you know, be back here again. So to any of the spirits that were here when I lived here, thank you for showing me that you exist. These were some of my first paranormal encounters ever and it took place right here in this house. So I hope you guys eventually find peace and I thank you for everything that you did for me and I hope that 
You'll treat the new owners with respect because we're not going to be around anymore. But thank you again and uh, goodbye. It's always hard saying goodbye, but at the end of the day, you have to in life. Sometimes you don't want to go, but deep down in your heart, you know that you have to. At least I've got years and years of extremely fond memories to look back on that took place right there in that house. This is the last picture on my camera roll that I ever took in my house. Pretty fitting, right? It symbolizes so much more than a joke though. In reality, it means the end of a very important stage in my life that no matter how badly I'd like to, I can never return Finally to. Finally leaving, we said our goodbyes to the house. I have at least, and it's really a sad feeling. As I hugged my family goodbye, it hit me that this was the last time that I'd ever be at my house. My family was moving out and I was headed back to Texas. It was definitely a bittersweet ending and even though our haunting was scary, I wouldn't trade my experiences and life in that house for the world. Thanks for watching everybody. It's Colin here, I'm signing off and stay spooky.